I'm Maria Ivanova. I was elected representative of North American civil society. I'm also a professor of uh, government and en environmental policy at the College of William and Mary in uh, Virginia, the United States. This uh, governing council has actually made a tremendous step forward in including civil society in one of the core issues that were discussed here, international environmental governance. The final decision now has a paragraph that explicitly calls for the participation of civil society groups from all regions into the official process that UNEP has initiated on international environmental governance. And I'm glad to report that this happened because of the dynamism and the engagement of civil society during the major groups and stakeholders forum, where all of us came together and unanimously agreed on a paragraph and recommendation to ministers, to governments, to explicitly include that this process will be open to civil society. We then lobbied governments, they put it to the floor, they agreed to it, and now the final decision has paragraph eight, which includes input from civil society into this incredibly important process on uh, international environmental governance. And I'd like to thank UNEP and the governments for allowing us to now be equal participants in, uh, in this process. So my name is Sasha Gabizel and I'm uh, the executive director of an organization called Women in Europe for a Common Future. And here I represent the Women's Caucus and I was also elected as the chair of the major groups and stakeholders facilitating committee. And well, we are very pleased with this um, se special session here in Bali. Uh, first of all, I think we had a very powerful startup meeting two days of the stakeholder global stakeholder and um, major groups forum where we had a very good exchange with UNEP and with stakeholders from all around the world on the key issues like the green economy what should it look like do we go for a new paradigm paradigm of economic development and do we still need economic growth or do we need to think of the economy in a more natural circular sense and for the women, this was very important because we see a risk that in the green economy, women might be left out. We know that, for example, in um, the US and in Europe, it's not so easy to get women to have jobs in, for example, the renewable energy sector because they need engineers. And we have, like in the US, only 12% engineers. Um, but we know that, for example, in developing countries, we already have many good examples of how women are engaging in the green economy. We have very nice examples from India, where women use their traditional weaving skills to make baskets for biogas um, plants for households. We know from um, examples from Colombia and um, from Uganda of women reusing waste for making, for example, bags, or women producing alternative packaging from calabasas and from natural fibers instead of plastics. So we think there is a real role for women to play in the green economy, and we were very pleased that that was one of the main topics here at the Governing Council meeting of UNEP, to see what will the green economy need for policies, um, for implementation, for financing, and how can we engage women to be full partners in the green economy development. We were also pleased because it allows the women's major group to interact with women from the other major groups, like the women from farmers who are working on safer pesticides, or the women from the indigenous peoples. And there I think the green economy really stresses the idea that when we have very dangerous, hazardous materials, which are very difficult to clean up and to safely manage, we should better face them out. And we had the example of the indigenous peoples in Niger, who are living, the Tuaregs, who are living in the region where there are the uranium mines. And we got the examples of how the women there 
are having more and more problems with children with birth effects from the radioactive pollution from the uranium mines and that they continue to live in great poverty despite the fact that nuclear industry is being promoted as something we need in a low carbon economy. It is not bringing development to the local people. It is bringing illness and death and poverty. So I think that type of voices we need to hear also here at the UNEP Governing Council um, meetings.